I mean, we, we hope you enjoyed this course. We sure have enjoyed putting it on. Um, I think it's been an amazing experience, especially working with all of these instructors here. Everyone just does a little bit and prepares their part, and we show up and teach and work together, and it's amazing. Um, we have other events that come up. So we've talked a lot about the Code Refinery Workshop. Um, maybe I can show that here. Uh, so we have lessons on a lot of version control and then um, other tools related to software. This is basically a logical next step to this workshop and many other ones. It's not Python specific. So before we've had this stream called Research Software Hour, we basically go on Twitch and talk about some interesting topic. Um, although we need to figure out what the future of that will be given our current time constraints. And I know there's a lot of different uh, things to figure out there. And who knows what else? There's this Linux shell event we've been talking about. We actually don't know if it will be uh, online and open yet, but we're sort of thinking about that. How to stay in touch. So what we do is not just us talking to you all, but we would like the community to be involved in what we do also somehow. Code Refinery was funded by uh, the Nordic E Infrastructure Collaboration for about five years, and now its funding has run out and it's turning into a community project with a little bit more funding. But basically, you should join, like, you can join us and help us to put on these workshops. It doesn't matter what you know, just being around, being a co instructor, something we can find a way to do this. Um, at Alto University, if you're with us, then you can also join our community at skicomp.alto.fi. I think there's a community page there. We have a chat and daily help sessions where we can comment more on these kinds of things. There's Nordic RSC, which means Nordic Research Software Engineers. Um, this is basically a group of people who work uh, how would you define? Is somewhere between a researcher and a software engineer. So scientists that do uh, lots of development. And I think most people here consider themselves research software engineers to some degree. But if you feel that programming is your thing in science, then you could consider joining a research software engineer group and then network with other people that are like you. Um, let's see this, how can we work together? Um, yeah, so we can, yeah, like, so here, we're here teaching things to you. You can help us by joining our community, giving us suggestions. You could even come be a co-instructor with us. So some of us as co-instructors haven't really done this before. So we basically co-teach in order to learn it ourselves. So this is always a possibility. Um, as follow-up, there is an after party in Zoom, which is in the bottom of HackMD. As soon as the stream ends, we'll all join there, and then we can chat more. And at least I'd really like to hear more personal stories about how you found the course and how we can improve. Um, Oh, we need feedback in the bottom of HackMD. Um, can someone add that while I'm talking? Uh, please tell us what you think. One good thing, one thing to improve, any other comments? Um, yeah. And also maybe sometime in the next weeks we could have a discussion or presentation about how we put on the course. Like what's the technology we're using behind it and how we actually get everything to work together. Um, at least that would be announced on the Code Refinery chat. So join there if you want to here. Uh, also about how you can help us. If you like these courses, help us advertise them to more people so that we can 
increase our audience, get more instructors, get more partners joining. Our strategy for Code Refinery in the future is to make it a partnership of all of the different universities <laughs> and like Alto and um, Oslo and KTH and so on, who are basically offering these courses to each other while using these best practices for teaching things either online or in person. Um, yeah, so if you like us, tell your university staff about us and ask them to get in touch. Am I missing anything? I'm sure yeah. I am, but can I mention something, Richard? Yeah. So let's say let's say you like this course and you would like to thank us in some way, like you know, because we are not in person. Um, like you would give, to give us a gift, for example. The best thing you can do is go and re uh, use this material and try to contribute something back, mm -hmm. even if it's a small spelling mistakes. <clears throat> that is the way that you could show your appreciation. Uh, and join maybe the next uh, sessions that we're going to arrange as a helper, as an instructor. Um, that is, that is, you know, a gift that you could give us if, if we really uh, think that you have to give something. Yeah, and um, the right now you can still ask questions on HackMD, but it will become somewhat less active um, after the course ends. Um, so there is a Zulip chat that has a help section. Um, should we paste the address to? I'll just paste an address directly to the help section. Um, that is a good place to ask questions, to discuss. Um, so any um, anything related to software development research, um, and this is um, a good way to get into the community to um, ask questions and to answer questions there. Yeah. Uh, the chat is already there, so I'll just add the help section. Also, to add to some area, what you can kind of give back um, in general, spreading yeah, spreading information about these courses, about these settings that are in general, and potentially where you got information from, and so on. Mm -hmm. Should we make the courses citable? <laughs> are they not? I'm not sure. There's actually a effort towards that now. So we should publish them on Zenodo. And <laughs> yeah. Then we can add version tags. I mean, yep. that's in progress. Is. Yeah. So work in progress. And also, I want to encourage everybody to, uh, you can join as a co-instructor. Co really, the best way to learn something is to teach it. And it's really fun to work with other people and discuss. It sounds a bit scary, but it's okay to be wrong and to show wrong things. There is really good pedagogy showing mistakes when things don't work. These are often the, the best moments. Yeah, we had the question of um, what's the best way to get into a programming language. I did, what I did with Julia is write an introduction to Julia and teach it with an expert. And I <laughs> definitely did learn something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it really, um, it, it is, um, it helps you a lot and um, you learn a lot and you don't have to be an expert in a topic to teach in a course. Uh -huh. But I think one thing that helped you there quite a bit is you knew one language very well. Mm -hmm. So this is, yeah, you, have, you have a good foundation and then that's exactly what I said earlier. If you have a good foundation, you can, yeah, go and teach. Yeah. But um, yeah, what? come I mean, come and be a co-teacher in one of these lessons and yeah. And you, you will be paired with an expert. And you will be the person who's asking the questions. Yeah. And you get the most direct answers. Yeah. Yeah, I think that this idea of mentoring is very important. Like, you don't learn by just reading things, but you learn by going and, like, sit, having a desk next to an expert or having someone on call and then basically being able to ask them questions often. And that's how I've learned many things. A good example, someone to talk with, and then I go to the courses and reading stuff.
Okay, should we? Yeah, I, I would oh. uh, want to add to that point, like uh, especially here in Finland, there's this tendency that if you're going to like a foreign lang language class, like Thomas can probably uh, say about his Finnish language classes that we in our schooling system we often teach like the the written rules, like how how you're supposed to use the sentence, how you're supposed to like write what kind, sort of like conjugation or declination or whatever you need in the language. And you learn the rules, but you never use the language necessarily, or you use it way too little. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the end, it, it might be hard to speak the language or it might be hard to use the language in a real world situation. And this, I think, applies to coding as well. Like I've read so many API pages of different things uh, that I think I know something about, but I, I really can't say that I'm, I'm an expert on any of them because I haven't used them in real world situations. So it, it's a good idea to like have the same kind of mindset to us in real world languages that uh, like you really need, just need to use them. And like similarly to real world languages, if you just like say, say like uh, with an, if you speak to a native speaker and just try to say hello, they are, uh, well, they are pleased that you're just trying. And uh, similarly to coding, it's it's usually a good idea to just like just try, and uh, that that will get you forward. Because like if you if you never code, if you never try the language, if you never try stuff, you will never learn it. You just you learn it after you have used it enough times. Um, the other thing that I would say uh, with respect to that is um, taking examples, for example, from Stack Exchange or similar websites. Um, can help you a lot also understanding the language because what you learn in a course is commonly yeah basic basic things and you might end up with knowing the basic structure of the language but you don't need know a lot of features that the language has and you encounter code that you're thinking what the heck is this doing and on stack on for example stack exchange it's commonly a problem that is being posed and yeah, people supply answers in very different styles and using very different methods and yeah that that can very easily teach you how the language is used in different situations and that i just had to think about that when um thinking about the finnish course where you're being taught the written language and then uh, people are just speaking in a completely different way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So should we thank everyone for attending? Thank all the instructors for being here and see you in Zoom. Yeah. Thanks a lot, and thanks, Richard, for keeping this all together. And many other people who are not visible here, mm. lots of people make this happen. Yeah, there's many people in the background that you haven't seen here. We should also update the web page to mention all the instructors. So, yeah, we can do that in a bit. Okay. But so, also, I mean, there's many people in the background. There's definitely also Richard doing a lot more than is visible. Um, and Richard, do you want to show your setup on, on, on the course once? Maybe, if I can find <laughs> the right camera here. <laughs> Let's hope. OK. Zoom pauses while it detects my new camera. Zoom is so okay. This is go. my recording studio here. Yeah, well, see you in Zoom then. Okay. I guess. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's Please come by. Over. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. See Bye. you next time. Bye. Bye.